Have you always wanted to get into cozy gaming, but you just didn't know where to start? I totally get you. It's such an overwhelming world out here with new cozy games being released all the time and people having their picture perfect setups on TikTok and Pinterest. It is so stressful to feel like you can even take your first steps into this world. Well, fear not. I'm here to hold your hand and guide you as you take your baby steps into the world of cozy gaming. I'm no expert by any means, but me and three of my girlfriends have formed Cozy Cat Games where we're currently developing a cozy baking game. So we do love cozy games enough to make our very own. So I've broken down how to get into cozy gamings in three simple steps, and we'll start off by talking about consoles. So the very first step is to choose which console you want to play on. I'm assuming you have absolutely no experience playing video games at all. So. Something that you likely do have, even if you're not a gamer, is a cell phone. Believe it or not, there's actually a huge network of games available on both iPhone and Android. Like a lot of the games that are released on bigger platforms are released in full on Apple Arcade or on, on Samsung. All you gotta do is pay a few bucks. And there's even a bunch of free games that are also available. The experience of playing on a phone isn't the full same experience that you'll get on some other consoles, but it's a really good way to get started. Also, if you have a tablet, there's a bunch of options there. I think there's even more games and specific games available on the iPad. The second console that I'll recommend for cozy gaming is a PC. You don't actually have to go out there and build your own PC to enjoy cozy gaming. I travel a lot, so personally, I play a lot of cozy games just on my MacBook. So if you don't know, Steam is like the game website. You download games there, you buy them there. It's usually for the lowest cost and they have a lot of sales. They have seasonal sales and depending on like when new games are being released, they do sales and literally any game that exists, exists on Steam. It's like the guaranteed platform. So you could play PC gaming on your MacBook, on your Windows machine, or if you're into it, you could build your own PC and that's where it really starts to get fun. You can have higher specs and you can have like a physical setup where you play your games. That allows for like really the cozy vibe to come out. Usually when you see cozy TikTokers or whatever, they'll have like a big PC and they'll have like their cozy accessories and everything. And that really has that special vibe to it, I'd say. But it's absolutely not necessary to have a whole PC setup in order to be a cozy gamer. And now the third console that I associate with cozy gaming is the Nintendo Switch. I would really only recommend getting a Nintendo Switch if you know that you're gonna be using it because it does get a little bit pricey. There are different models depending if you just want the handheld version or if you want the version that can become a big screen with the TV or if you want the more specced out OLED version. But honestly, just the regular Nintendo Switch is the one that I would recommend to most people because you have that option of either playing handheld or playing on a big screen TV. Most games available on the Switch are in nature cozy. That's kind of Nintendo's brand, right? Like it's, that's the, they know their demographic. You're not really gonna find as many cozy games on PlayStation or Xbox as you would on the Switch. So that's why I say that as the main cozy gaming platform. The best thing about the Nintendo Switch is it's super user friendly. It's really easy for beginners and it feels really nice to actually sit down and play. Like the experience of playing on my Switch is just like, next level to me. Like I love playing on my laptop, it's great. But when I actually have the Switch and I can be curled up in a blanket, it's just a really intimate experience that I wouldn't trade for anything. It's worth it for me, but it's definitely something you graduate to, I'd say. Something that you would get once you know that you're really into cozy gaming. I'd say the next step is my favorite step, and it's the process of designing the space that you play in. So this doesn't have to be super complex. It can be as simple or as complex as you want it to be, but I feel like having a space where you game, one unique space in your house that's your little haven, your place to enjoy, that really makes the experience special because you go there every time knowing you're gonna have that cozy experience. There's a few little tips that I wanna give for you to design that cozy space and make it really your own. The first thing is choosing the actual space. You want to choose a space that feels uninterrupted and is some place that you can go to maybe be by yourself and enjoy your own company. You want to choose some place that has cable connections and places that you can put wires in because or else you don't want to spend a fortune on like extensions and like having wires everywhere. It's just a nightmare. So do yourself a favor and pick somewhere close to an outlet. Also, my personal suggestion is to pick somewhere that's next to a window because having that natural light come in gets you a bit out of that like gamer stereotype. You know, like I need to go touch grass. Like if you're next to a window, you can get a little bit of that vitamin D, 
get a little bit, you know, of a sunrise, you know when the days are passing. And I feel like cozy gaming is a bit more connected to nature than other types of gaming. So yeah, I would recommend being close to a window. This is an optional step, but if you're into it, I would pick an aesthetic for your cozy gaming setup. So some people are into like cottage core, dark academia, minimalist setup, more artsy. What feels like you? I mean, you can invent your own aesthetic, but I find that like, you know, finding inspiration on Pinterest, picking a color scheme, all of that, is so fun. I really went wild with that. I'm currently traveling, so I'm not at home with my real setup, but I'm super into art. So mine is super artsy and a little bit beige and minimalist, so I can have all my paintings around me. And yes, I miss my setup very much. The desk and the chair that you have in your cozy gaming setup is super important because you're gonna be spending a lot of time there. I mean, it doesn't necessarily have to be a desk and a chair. You can have like a lounge thing or a couch, but just make sure that whatever it is, it's ergonomically set up so that you don't have back issues or posture issues or back pain or anything like that. If you do have a desk, make sure that it's one that has plenty of space. You want to have space so maybe if you want to put like food next to you or if you want to have a bigger keyboard at a certain time or if you want to be able to do some homework on the desk as well, you have space to do that. Really don't underestimate the power and the utility of having an abundance of desk space. That's just, you're gonna thank me later. <laughs> and another thing that is super important, keeping it clean. I think every single day I go through, and I'm a bit of a neat freak, but every single day I wipe down my desk. I get off the dust. I hate having like food left over the next day when I wake up the next morning and there's like a, a bowl of food that I forgot to take into the kitchen. It's just so nice to keep, respect your place, respect your desk, respect your, your cozy space, and keep it clean, keep it nurtured. It really adds to that high vibe and the cozy feeling, trust me. Also make sure that with the wires, you have proper cable management so it's not everywhere and it doesn't distract you when you're moving things around. And that you also have enough storage space, so boxes to keep certain electronics or if you wanna display the games that you have, have proper storage for that as well. So next up, the most important part is choosing what games you actually want to play. It's really important to know what kind of gamer you are, what kind of games you enjoy, and this is based on your past experience and your personality. But most games are going to be available on both Nintendo Switch and Steam. For mobile, you're going to have to definitely check that out on a case-by-case -case basis. In the cozy gaming niche, there is currently a farming game fatigue. Farming games was where cozy games kind of started with um, Harvest Moon. People credit Harvest Moon from the 90s to be the first official cozy game. That's kind of like where cozy gaming really started, but nowadays a lot of games feel like repeats of previous games that have already been done, which is something that we're addressing in our cozy baking game. If you want to find out more about that, we have videos on the channel. But I do also have a fresh cozy gaming recommendation video, which you can watch up here if you're looking for cozy games that are a little bit fresh and new. But this is a beginner's guide, so I'm gonna rapid fire some recommendations that pretty much every cozy gamer has played and loves. The most classic recommendation I can give to you is Animal Crossing's New Horizons. Animal Crossing New Horizons is pretty much the cozy game. It's the one that really kickstarted the niche back during COVID times and people needed something to connect to their long distance friends and family. It has all of the cozy gaming mechanics that you would expect. It has farming, fishing, decorating, getting to know the NPCs, and really that free roaming ability that you get in these types of games. Stardew Valley is where the craze for these farming sims really kicked off. Stardew Valley is like the basic farming sim that anyone's going to recommend to you, and it's multiplayer, really customizable. You can create whatever experience you want to have out of this game as you would like. It has gorgeous music and art, and it's really got a great cozy vibe about the game. Now, one of the newer ones, and that's a little bit unconventional, is Palea. It's a free-to-play, cozy MMO. It has the free-roaming nature that you expect from cozy games. You can customize your own character, complete quests, and have the cozy experience with other players live. It has seasons and day cycles and events, and it's really a fun time. A cozy game that pretty much everyone has played is Unpacking. Unpacking is a zen puzzle game about putting things back in place once you've unpacked and moved to a new city. You follow the player through the different stages of their life. It's really relaxing and peaceful, and the whole process of putting things and organizing has that kind of 
vibe of decorating and customizability that people look for in cozy games. And you also have the narrative aspect because you follow them through the different stages of their life. Another really popular game is Disney Dreamlight Valley. Disney Dreamlight Valley is low stakes. There's no timeline and you make of it what you want. Can you sense a trend here? You do quests and you do them at the pace that you want to do. You can farm, fish, cook, decorate, and the map shows where all the characters are at any given time. So you can go and have the relationships with the NPCs and do the quests at your own time. And if you're looking into narrative games, which is something that a lot of cozy gamers enjoy, I would recommend A Short Hike. A Short Hike is a beautiful story with simple mechanics and beautiful vibes in general. You can explore and go out on your own, but you also have a main quest that you go towards. So you have a main vision, but you can go and explore and get lost along the way. So those are all the tips that I have for you guys today. If you follow those, then I accredit you the award of Cozy Gamer. I mean, what does it really mean even to be a cozy gamer? It's not like an official title. As long as you like a certain type of game and that game makes you feel warm and comfortable and cozy, you're a cozy gamer. It's not the whole point of this niche that we're inclusive of everyone and we just want everyone to have a fun time without being gatekeepy or weird or whatever, so. Yeah, let us know what other kind of videos you would like in the comments. I think that we're going to start to make a little bit more behind the scenes content about the cozy baking game that we're developing. So if you want to see a specific thing about our process and development, let us know in the comments. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a great day.